We're gonna teach you the key aspects behind transitioning from the 1.6 kilo discus to the 2K discus, and we're gonna start right now. All right, so some of the key factors that we have to bring up is that if we're transitioning, and I believe that we can use this even with the 1K discus at the middle school level, transitioning to the 1.6 if we're in the US in high school, or if we're international, okay, you're outside the US and you're going from the 1.25 or the 1.5 to the 1.75. And then if you're international from the 1.75 to the 2K, or here in the US, if you're in high school, throwing that 1.6K and then transitioning to the two kilo discus. The biggest aspect that makes this challenging is that you're increasing the weight. And so one of those main factors is that we have to understand that technical prowess. We have to have a sensible technical model. So that first key factor behind transitioning from the lighter implement to the heavier implement is you have to have an understanding of that technical model. We've got to think about moving that right around the left if we are a right-handed thrower. Then think about grounding in the middle with a sense of a high point. Where are we catching that high point? Is it the middle of the sector? Is it down that left sector? And then letting the left leg come around the right leg in the middle, again, if we're a right-handed thrower. And then the left grounds rapidly while we're at 180 or a little bit deeper. And then we wanna transition and transfer forward at the finish. So if we can have that as our blueprint, as our technical model, we can build upon that even without throwing the heavier implement. So technique is absolute key. Now, the second big factor, we've got to be lifting weights. If you're transitioning to a heavier implement, you better be in the weight room. And it blows me away that even today in the United States, there's some high level discus throwers that don't think that you need to lift weights. Meanwhile, Che is out power cleaning 190 kilos. Daniel Stahl's deadlifting 700 plus pounds. Mikolos Alekna is skinny and can power clean 170 kilos. But we still have people thinking we don't need to lift weights. If we want to make a good solid transition to those heavier implements, I recommend lifting at least four days a week. We've gotta make sure that we can bench a decent amount of weight. We've gotta make sure that we have a good power cinch, a good power clean, a good back squat, front squat. Those are exercises that we use inside of our throws base strength app, Peak Strength. You guys can go over to peakstrength.app and you can actually click on that throws base program that's gonna be specific to shot put and discus. So that's that second key factor is you've got to be lifting weights. That third key factor is that when you're in high school, you should be throwing heavier implements. You should be throwing lighter implements. One big factor around someone named Evan Arnott, a former athlete of ours here who threw 195 feet 10 inches. Evan was a bean pole. He was very skinny. He was somewhat strong, but very, very skinny. He had long arms and could throw the discus. One big factor with Evan is that no one really wanted to recruit him because of how skinny he was. He ended up during his senior year going to a meet at Lehigh, throwing a 2K over 51 meters while he was in high school. And what that showed was that he was able to transfer well and handle that 2K implement because we had been training with the 2K, we had been training with the 175, and we were competing with the 1.6. Even talking about someone like TJ Wiggins, who's currently in the collegiate system, in the NCAA, He's another individual who threw over 196 feet in high school and during his freshman year of college was able to throw 57 meters with the 2K discus. So these are phenomenal examples of why you should be training with that heavier implement. Another big factor around training with that heavier implement is that you have different feelings around the patterning. When you're starting off, the heavier implement should only be about 20% of your training. And then as you make progress, you can start to slowly increase the intensity and increase the percentage of that training. You might get to a point where you actually might throw the heavier implement a little bit more than the lighter implement or the competitive implement. But one thing we've just got to keep in mind is that we're still competing with that 1.6. Sometimes some athletes struggle to feel that 1.6 after they've thrown the 2K for a long period of time. So you've just got to be aware of that. And one key factor too to bring in is that you should be able to add about 20 plus feet to your 2K discus row into the 1.6. So if I throw the 2K, let's say 160 feet, I should be able to hit the 1.6 around 180, give or take. Okay, that's just like a general rule of thumb but use that fact of improving your technical model. Second thing, lifting weights. Third aspect, making sure that you're training consistently with both of those different implements. And then finally, that fourth key aspect is no different from the one six to the two kilo. You've got 
to know how to fly the discus. One big factor is that if you're throwing the one six very, very well, and we understand that that discus should be flying typically with the edge down, typically edge down and then it can turn over later. That is no different than if we're flying a two kilo implement, that edge should be down and it will turn over later. So we have to still practice how we're flying the implement. That means that we're going back to that lesson number one. We have to have that technical model. The technical model can really establish the flight. Lesson number four is how we're releasing with our hand, okay? And if we're releasing that and we're doing technical throws over a long period of time, we're gonna start to release that 2K much smoother. I'm gonna use Sam Mattis as an example. Sam will take nice, easy throws pretty regularly in training, 50, 60, 70% for about 65% of his throws. You can even see him this past year when he won the US national title, he was warming up at you know, 57 to 60 meters. And then he turned on the gas, let out a little yell and flew the discus better. And on a second throw, 65, 90 or 65, 60. Fifth round throw, 65, 93 to win the US national title. But that comes back to flying a nice discus understanding you have to be strong, you have to lift consistently, you have to throw off weight, on weight, underweight implements, and you have to have that technical model. So use those four key factors to transition from that 1.6 to that 2K discus. And if you guys need help with your programming with that periodization, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and you can download Peak Strength, select discus-based training to optimize your overall strength and improve that peak performance. Do this today so that you can drop some bombs. Peace.